You want to hold the snake and introduce it? Or? Uh, I'm good to have hold the snake. You like it? <laughs> I'm cool. Okay, here, here, bring the snake. You hold his head. Just, right. uh, you, know, you give him the whole body. Right. Yeah, I'll come out of front and I'll get it. Go put it around, put it around his neck. You want to? Okay. Just put it around his neck. Yeah, put it around his neck. It's very warm. Yeah, yeah. just put it around his neck. <gasps> You're so brave. You're brave. Oh my God. Hold this. Yeah. Hold this. Yeah. Yeah. Hold this. Okay. He's pretty strong. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay. Oh my God. All right. You ready? We're rolling. <laughs> okay. All right, so today I have a very special guest with me, and uh, and not that one, but the one a little bit farther over here, Jack Hanna. Um, and uh, normally we see Jack Hanna a lot on the Letterman show, uh, but today he's in Toledo, and um, he put this lovely friend around my neck. Um, so uh, can I call you Jack? Jungle Jack. Jungle Jack. Jungle Jack. All right. Yeah. First of all, uh, tell us a little bit about who Jack Hanna is. Well, I love to put snakes on people. I can see no. that. <laughs> No, I tell you what, once you get the snake, here, here, Calvin, I'll let, I know you're, it's uncomffortable, I realize that. Oh, it's that. fine. It's well, the snake's got 220 teeth shaped like fish hooks, so while well, I'm trying to answer a serious question, I don't want to get bit and then have you get bit, and then this turns into a thing that you may never want to know, Jack Hanna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no. Now we're safe. Um, who is Jack Hanna? I guess, you know, as I was a little boy raised on a farm in Tennessee, I always loved animals, and I was always talked to people about animals, and I guess I'm a person that's more of a of an educator in a, in a fun and entertaining way, but in a serious way from the standpoint we're dealing with the creatures that are virtually, a lot of them are endangered species and almost gone. So uh, my whole belief has been to teach people about animals in a fun way, where they take you like your professors in school. They remember what you're telling them. And that's what this, the thing is all about tonight. Uh, not just about the, the books I do or the library, it's about telling people about these beautiful creatures and why they should be on the planet in a fun way. All right. So. And in a fun way, obviously Letterman gets a little crazy sometimes, and, and he's not as, in, in, as endangered as he may perceive. No, but no. Um, that's a good way for people to learn about the animals. Exactly. That's, that's a venue. Some people say, why does Jack take animals on TV? Even some people in the zoo world don't like it. But the point is, there's always uh, TV is a very powerful media, and we've got to get the word out there as quick as we can. And this is my 26th, 7th year for David Letterman, or 28th year for Good Morning America. So uh, Letterman we did last Thursday. And he hit me with a, I don't know if you saw that, a, a bear spray. He almost put my left eye out. He, you know, he thought he was joking around, but the blast almost destroyed me over here. But uh, that's, that's, that's funny, and he did it to me. And uh, we've, we've done this four times a year for 26 years, and the reason it works is because I'm, I'm like a character. You know, I, I'm like some bum that picked up a squirrel in the street. And that doesn't bother me as long as he doesn't uh, really make a lot of fun of the animals. It's always, if you notice the show, it's always me. You know, I'm the one taking the brunt, and some people ask me how I put up with that. I don't pay any attention. You know, you get 500 bucks to do the show, big deal. I go do some other show, or you know, it doesn't even pay for the gas to go over there in New right. York. So it's just one of those deals. It just seems to work with the two of us. And, and believe it or not, people learn from that. You wouldn't believe the letters we get over, over, over whether we college students or people who might not even, you know, care about the animal world have learned about it through the Letterman Show. And Good Morning America is a different show. That's more of education. Larry King, when we do the one-hour specials, that's obviously uh, because he. <laughs> Larry King is, you know, it's, we go through 40 animals on a show on that, on that one-hour show. Whether it be the Ellen Show, who loves animals. So every show we do, six national shows, are always different, depending on what the audience is. All right, so tell me a little bit about, I heard this story about a bear and, and fending off a bear. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it happened about four weeks ago. I, I live near Glacier for almost 20 years now. We hike every time. That's my life. It's, I don't play golf, and I like golf, but I don't play. I, I love to hike. That's my life. And I just happen to be hiking like I have all of the last 20 years. I have my bear spray like I always carry. It just so happens like a police officer carries a gun. He may never use it his whole life. But that goes ahead of the bear spray. I just, it was a two-year-old young male, came around the corner, and the mother had both the cubs. I think cubs are two-year-olds, quite large. And uh, she, at that time of year, she's trying to get rid of them because she was getting ready to go. You know, after two years, she wants to go on their own. Uh, if this had been this year's cubs, we'd have probably had somebody very severely injured. But the, the, the one male youngster came after me. The mother took the other one. She didn't care. This one male wanted to prove who he was, and so he just started coming at me, and 30 feet I fired the bear spray, and he just went Psh, like this, it didn't work. This is in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And then he got within 20 feet, I fired again, he just went like this again. And then right when he got in my face, people say, that we had four witnesses behind me because they didn't have bear spray, they were on the trail. And I just unloaded the whole thing right in his face, and he went oh, like that and fell over backwards and took off. So that had been a, a little, little nerve-wracking. You know, it's amazing. Uh, it's like anything in life, I guess, uh, when you get ready to, play college ball and I played a little bit of that and you hit somebody real hard, you're not thinking about that. Or or you're 
in the thing that happened, might happen in a helicopter like it happened to me, or you know, in a submarine that starts leaking like I was in once, two-man submarine, you, you, your mind goes into overdrive, you know, and, and at that point I had no time to get afraid. I just did what I was taught over the years about wild animals and bears. You never run from them. You stand up big and you, you, you walk backwards like that. I was on a cliff trail, so I had to go backwards. It's the same pace this bear was coming forwards with the five people behind me and tell them that while I'm talking forward and looking at the bear. You know, so it's, it's one of those things I remembered all this stuff in my mind or because or, you don't have a tenth of a second to screw around and make a wrong move, you know. Even though I didn't know what I did was doing it right, it turned out to be right. Uh, and, but I didn't think the bear would, the other bear would come after me, but it did. So the bottom line with this story is you've got to respect animals. Yeah, it's, it's all about respect. The whole thing is about respecting animals. That's a very good point you said. That's the word I teach everybody is respect. Well, you know, my good friend Steve Irwin, he respected animals, but he did it in, with a hands-on way. I don't do hands-on. I, I film animals with respect as he did. But my respect is a way away filming these animals with respect in their own territory. The, the whole key is this, is a comfort zone. The wild animals have their comfort zone, and a human being has their comfort zone. When you cross into each other's comfort zone, that's when the problems become a train wreck. And I, I'll, if you notice my 23 years of filming, we always film animals with respect because it's their home. It's not my home. And that's why, have we had accidents? Of course we have. You know, you, you, things happen when you're out there in Africa or Malaysia and the jungles and snakes and all this kind of stuff. We've had several things happen. But, uh, you know, thank goodness we've never had the serious thing happen. So bottom line here, Jack Hanna likes animals. Yeah, you know, I, I do. I, I, that's my big problem. Somebody says, when am I going to retire? You know, I can't see that. I, I wish I could because I love to hike and see my grandkids. But I'm just so enthralled when I see anything. If I see a deer in my backyard in Montana or a bald eagle fly by, I go crazy, you know. I just, uh, I'm fascinated by any animal. I just, you know, as I get older, I'm even fascinated more by birds. I used to not be a real bird person, but I'm just fascinated by the birds now. And, uh, you know, I've just been very lucky to live a dream. You can imagine a little boy in Tennessee on a farm and living a dream to be a zookeeper, now a director of the number one zoo in the country, Columbus Zoo. And then who would ever dream that Marlon Perkins' Wild Kingdom? You're too young, but he was, had an animal show, one of the first oh, ones. I'm not that young. Oh, well, there's Wild Kingdom. Remember that? I do remember right. that. Right. Well, I, I, I was watching him on Disney, or Disney was last, Wild Kingdom and Disney on Sunday nights. I said, man, I, I can't even get out of the state of Tennessee, much less go to Africa. And here I've traveled the world, every continent in the world, and done over 400 shows every continent in the world. And, and just, like I said, if I got wiped out tomorrow or tonight, you know, I've lived a thousand lifetimes. Well, Jack, I appreciate your time. Well, no problem. I hope and you didn't mind the snake. Oh, the oh, yeah, snake. Oh, I got, one more. I got one more animal. One more oh. animal. They eat snakes, uh -oh. by the way. Oh, Sorry about well, this. Well, wait. Why do we got them together then? No, no, no. This, this animal right. here, this is, a, this is a palm civet. And right. just stand still. Don't try and hold him. We're going to leave him. You act like a tree. Okay. Now, you've heard, remember the SARS disease? It killed about, uh, it killed about uh, several thousand people in China and killed 64 people in Australia. This is right. the animal that caused it. Not this animal, <laughs> this, this species of animal. People eat this as a delicacy in China. All right. And so they, they serve it like you would a, a steak or something, but they don't do that anymore. And so now this animal only exists out in the wild. Well, he's very cute. He is. He eats, he eats cobras too, by the way, me and the mongoose family. All right. He won't eat me though, right? No, if he bites you, it ain't going to kill you. It'll hurt, but it ain't going to kill you. <laughs> All right. On that note, uh, <laughs> that's our story with Jack Hanna so, uh, and my little friend here. Um, so... We're going to send things back to you guys in the studio. I am uh, with uh, Jack Hanna. I'm Ryan Vetter. This is News 11.